Good afternoon and welcome to the SAGE Intelligence Reporting Webinar. The agenda for the session will run as follow. We'll be showing some challenges and benefits of the product itself. I'm also going to show you some reporting in the web and some reporting in Excel for those users that um, prefer Excel environment. The main key problem areas that we normally face with reporting is it's sometimes difficult to get data out of a system. Uh, it takes too much time or the data is not relevant. So as you can see, we can solve most of those problems with the intelligence product. And I'm going to showcase that for you today. If we look at some key benefits of the system, you can see there the Sage Enterprise Intelligence is a single comprehensive BI solution that encapsulates all features and, and capabilities in terms of reporting. It's a fully web and mobile solutions. It also have the facility to bring back live financial data and in your web environment and in your Excel environment. It integrates with our Sage product suites, mainly Sage 300 and Sage Enterprise Management. The nice thing about Report Writer that I'm going to show you today is that it allows real-time access to your data as well as to multiple data sources. It has excellent performance and response times because it's running in a web environment and it will improve your performance management as you can see there on the screen. Some of the other key features and benefits is that it's fully integrated to our Sage business suites as I mentioned. It also has a, a OLAP cube facility where you can build your own cubes in the product. Um, as we know, a cube is a three-dimensional slice of data, so it enables a lot more data analytics and you can access critical data much faster than in the past. With Excel, it's got an Excel add-in module that gets installed and you can also report from Excel. The other main benefit of the product is that it have the ability to consolidate information across multiple systems. And that's not just your Sage system, it could be your payroll system or it could be any other operational system that you have, mainly running in most of the key um, and main databases like SQL or Oracle um, and some of the other pervasive databases that we know. If we look at a bit closer, you would notice that the product enables the user to be self-sufficient. So mainly what you want from a report writing tool is that it empowers the users um, on a day-to-day -day basis to get meaningful reports out, and it also needs to be simple. It needs to integrate to your system by default. If we look at it on a more technical level, we could see that the product allows us to link to multiple data sources, which enables us to build cubes or data warehouses in a real-time way, and then uh, at the end produce the reports that is either visible in one of your devices, which is either mobile, or it could be a desktop device running normal Google Chrome or uh, Mozilla or Firefox, any HTML browser based. I spoke about the HTML5 based capabilities and technology in the product. I also mentioned the multiple data sources. Uh, what I haven't mentioned is that the product allows us to do a single sign on. So it could integrate to your LDAP, which is your network authentication method. And you can set that up in the system. It is a fairly self-service uh, model in the way that you can quickly drag and drop fields and I will show that in a practical demonstration in the next few minutes. We all talk about mobility and that we need information on the go. Sage Enterprise Intelligence can run on any mobile device. You can actually get your real-time information in a fairly easy way, which is ideal for C CEOs, CFOs or even salespeople on the run. So we're going to show you an actual demonstration now. So I'm going to log into the, the web-based product as admin. If I log in as the admin user, I will be able to see all the functions and features. Based on my user profile, you can see that because I'm logged in as admin, I set my landing page to go to the sales manager's dashboard. Because I want to look at this dashboard on a daily basis just to track the sales. And what the user sees at this point in time is some of these widgets that's actually compiled and placed on this sales manager dashboard. I'll be showing you a simple example on how to edit or create one of these dashboards, which makes it really easy to use. Let's start at um, just navigating around. On the left hand side, we have a command center 
where we will be able to create some of these reports and even pick some of the sample templates. There's quite a lot of templates available uh, as well as for the Sage Enterprise Management tool. We also have a favorite section that you as the user can add some of your dashboard and reports as your own favorites. That makes it quite easy to navigate back to and just select them to run on a frequency that you require. The actual dashboard section consists of a few modules, as you can see here, which are the standard Sage 300 modules. On the reporting side, uh, you have reports available for each of these modules as well. So these ship with the product and they actually get installed by a process we call the install template process. And you can then mainly use these process uh, templates to edit and to create your own ones. So let's look at the actual dashboard and command center. If we go there for a second, if we open one of these uh, sub modules or screens, you will see that we've got some processes available in each one of these. So I'll just open a few of them. What these processes are, they mainly consist of connections to the areas that you would want to use the data. So if we're looking at customer aging and I open the customer aging, you can see that we've got some reports already defined, which is basically the templates that's installed. So I could open up one of these reports by just double clicking on one of them. And on the right hand panel, you will see that it will actually render the report. Now, these reports consist mainly of a grouping, a pivot, and a column section. This enables the user to drag and drop some of these fields onto this report, where you can basically change them and save them as something else. So I'll quickly show you just what I mean by that. If we click on the right-hand side under Dimensions and Measures, we can easily select another dimension to report on. Currently, it's reporting on fiscal period sorting and by due date sorting but let's say we want to rather pivot by the fiscal period or the fiscal year i would go to my fiscal section take my fiscal year and actually just drag it as a pivot and that will change the whole outcome and the whole look and feel of this report now because we can see now it pivots by fiscal year and as you can see at the bottom of the of the screen the the legends here so you can either enable or disable these and this will change the actual look and feel of your report Similar to the drag and drop, we also have columns. Columns are normally the information that gets displayed. So if I use another example of, let's say, the overdue balances, which is a more practical worksheet example. And as you can see, the little picture here on the left hand side actually shows you what type of graph or, or worksheet that it's actually displayed in. You can see some of these columns um, available. And those are called measure, measures or measurements. These measures can change and you can select them from the list available once you open your report. You can either take them away by just clicking and removing them. And you can even change some of your sorting options. So let's say we want to report by customer, but we only want to show the top five customers. That's really easy. All we do is we navigate to the top of the field that you want to change you right click you say advanced options and you can tell the product only to show the top 10 customers by typing in 10 in that box at this stage you can see the product will then filter and pick the top 10 customers to display in your report the next step is once you have your report available you would like to distribute that to additional users or even to a recipient list this feature by sharing this information which is available allows us to create a distribution or schedule a distribution as mentioned here or you can export the report and pdf and excel formats are available as well as html and xml but normally what would happen in a working environment is you will schedule the report and that enables us to create a short little schedule which we can then set the frequency to run every week or every month. This is ideal in, in typical in a sales environment where you need information about sales in a really quick and, and timely manner. Other options are also available in the worksheet. So once your worksheet are done and you would like to graphically change some of the um, worksheets, you would go here, click on your worksheet properties, and as you can see, we also have some 
different views or combination of views available uh, ideally on a combination chart maybe for this report because there's more than one column and filter so you can see um, rendering this report gives you a totally different look and feel and if there's any further grouping at the top those will be your drill down levels so the next level of drill down as you can see in this report might be the document number for mr ronald black and you can actually drill down further into the document so some of the graphs might not make sense because you can see um, there's quite a lot of data behind that drill down but you can select the graph that's applicable for your environment so we spoke about the dimensions we spoke about the measurements you also have the ability to calculate or do calculated columns as you can see in this one uh, where you can easily drag the net balance so the product allows you to create your own custom calculations based on fields you might say take previous year results less this year results and display it as a as a variance between the two years in a financial format the product has natively a few reports available as well so if we look at a typical finance report you can see we've got some budget reporting we've got detailed transactions there so if i look at some financial um, information for those financial people on the on the webinar typically an actual versus budget is a very common report so if we look at that report just dragging it in there you will see it will prompt me for a budget so in Sage 300 we know you have the ability to report on at least five budget sets if you were on premium edition so you would select that and the result will then compare based on that so this data is actually retrieved from the cube the data cube that's available and as you can see um, we have certain grouping at the top um, but if you don't want to see it that way like I showed you before you can easily drag and drop the information which gives you a totally different view this is a more ideal view I would say where you can see some trends and analysis and you can drill down further into the detail typically in an environment where there's some information that you might want to filter out that's also very easy to do in the product maybe there's some lines with uh, zeros where you don't want to see any zeros so that's fairly easy as you can see here maybe on these sections here all i do is i i click on it and i say i want to exclude the zeros from the filter and it basically pops it here at the bottom and it will exclude those zero lines from filtering so those are some of the standard features there's so many more you can do with a product talking about security in the product if you want to navigate to the security features you can see there's a little administration icon so if I click on that, the product provides a scheduler. This is where you manage your licenses. It also manages the Excel publishing, which I will show later. The nice feature about it, as I mentioned, the OLAP manager, which basically allows you to create your cubes. And you can see it comes with the standard cubes already predefined. And the product also enables you to add your own cubes. So this mainly comes into fruition where you want to uh, add data from different data sources. The product has full security available you can set up your users you can actually manage your user groups and you can add and exclude users from certain groups and that allows you to manage your security in a very good way most of the security groups are role based so you can set up your groups based on your user roles or department levels and that's how you can manage your full security in the system what the product also allows us to do it allows us to add more data sources to the environment and that's typically where you would need maybe more than one sage environment or even maybe data from a different data source uh, that we can actually manage and edit this to combine and add more data sources as you can see in the product i've got the one set up here the sage 300 environment with the cubes but it allows me to go and add more data sources and i can click select the actual database that i want to use for that purpose so that's it for the web environment. We're going to go into the Excel environment and I will show you some more features there. For those users that want to use Excel, I've just opened a simple profit and loss statement for period in Sage 300 sort of format. As you can see, it's a really simple report, but there's some formulas that gets displayed here. With the Sage Enterprise Intelligence product, a add-in get installed, which gives you or supplies you with these functions and formulas where you can actually easily write some of your reports here in excel 
I will showcase a few of these formulas today just to show what you can achieve with a product. It's really easy to get data out of the product once you're in the Excel environment as well. So we're going to start off just by looking at the formula. There's a little thing called the formula wizard. And if I click on formula wizard, it gives you an option of your environment and what they call the reference where you can actually select a reference. And as you can see, you can actually build your own little reference here, which enables you then to get to a result of a number figure like revenue. So in this example, we're using account category number 15, which is my revenue category. And all that the product does, it actually references some of these cells in Excel. And you can see I'm picking an actual original. So these are the fields available just in this uh, reference. You can actually reference all parts of your data with this product. That includes your accounts payable, receivable, banking, taxing, GL, and other modules that you might have. The other thing that I need to show you, which is quite a neat little um, feature in the product, is the duplicator. This duplicator allows you to actually duplicate the current sheet that you're on and enables you to create multiple sheets, let's say for multiple departments or cost center. So the way that it works is you click on your duplicator, you pick your environment that you've set up. In this case, I've used the actual budget environment. And then my dimensions, um, I can select, as you know, with the Sage 300 tool, you can select your dimension using your account segments. So I'm going to select number two. And then all I have to do is I have to point to where this dimension value is, which is this field I've got here in the, in the cell. And once I click OK, the product will actually go and generate, depending on the number of segments that I have, it will actually generate individual sheets here at the bottom. As you can see, it's busy churning there, setting up the data. And you will see, once I click on these cost centers in Sage, it actually changes the data and the view. So currently we have uh, data for 100 and 200 there, and that makes it quite nice and neat. It actually speeds up report writing per cost center. And then each time you just have to refresh once you log into the product. There's also quick prompts, ideally for year and periods. And the other thing that I wanted to show you is that you can actually create a pivot table and even extract data out of this product. So for those users that would love just to work with the raw data, what you do is I've just created a new blank sheet. I'll move it here to the back. And I use my data extraction utility. I select any one of my processes that I want to use. Maybe I want to use, let's say, the budget information. I pick my environment and I would say, yep, let's add the fiscal year because a budget's normally applicable by fiscal year. And if we go down, you can see I can say, show me the net movement, show me the GL account, and maybe some optional fields for those users that also make use of the optional fields. So I'm just going to select a few fields here just to show the concept. You can include headers if you want to work with the headers, then at least you know which column you're working on. And you can even tell the product to refresh once you open the workbook again. So this is pure data extraction. I'll hit the OK button. And as you can see, it queries the database and it actually displays the data for me in a raw format. So that's the data extraction utility. Last but not least, you can also pivot data, normal pivot in Excel for those users that would love to use pivot tables. I'm going to pick actuals and budgets again, just to demonstrate you on, on this feature. You can also put some filters on years, especially if you don't want to see all the financial data for, for all the years. You might just say for a specific year, I'm working in 2020. So I would say let's use the data in 2020 for this exercise. I pick my fields, move them to the right. You can pick multiple fields, as you can see, and then all move them to the right, because these are the columns that's going to get displayed once you extract the data. Once you click OK, it will then create a pivot scenario for you, and you can then easily select the pivots that you need, add them to a normal pivot function there. So that's the pivot function in the Sage Intelligence Enterprise tool. The other option you have is you can change your references. Like I mentioned, you can then select where you want to get the data from and you can add some more. This is also available in the web environment. And in the web environment, you actually make it possible to select these 
processes that you want to use in Excel. So this is just a quick wrap up of the Excel adding tool. It's a quite a nice tool to have for those users that are really fond of Excel and work in Excel environment.